Hello! Welcome to our episode of Cooking with Christina Fogel. Today I'm making a true old-fashioned classic and this recipe is one my mother-in-law absolutely loves and it was passed on to her from her family and she shared it with me. Today I'm going to share with you her recipe for divinity. I also want to share with you that to support this cooking channel, I started an Etsy store and if you are interested in supporting me, the link is down below. When I make candy, I like to have all my ingredients ready to go. I'm using 2 and 2 thirds cups of sugar, 2 thirds cup of light corn syrup, 1 half cup of water, 2 egg whites, 1 teaspoon of vanilla, and about 2 thirds cup of chopped nuts, and you can leave the nuts out if you don't like them. I'm also using a candy thermometer and some food coloring. So when I make Divinity, one of the first things I like to do is a lot of prep work because once the candy is ready, I have to move really quickly and I want everything ready to go. So I'm going to start today by using, I'm going to use several baking sheets and I like parchment paper. And so what I do is I actually like to tape them down because the candy is really sticky and it'll keep lifting up that paper. And the tape doesn't really work that well, but it just helps enough to keep the candy from lifting off with the paper. The candy hardens really fast, so anything I can do to make it easier helps. And you can actually buy little weights to use. If you like to make candy, you can buy little weights to add you know, to the trays. I also, one of my tricks, so I like to use you know, like just silverware and I'll put them right on the tray and that will also help weigh it down. So between the tape and the knives that will keep that parchment paper in place. And I'm going to prepare at least two or maybe three of these baking trays because I'm going to want a lot of room to work. I also am going to be using a couple of spoons and I'm going to want them buttered so I have a piece of the butter wrapper with a little bit of butter on it and I just kind of you know, use that to butter my spoons. So now those are ready to go. Put that off to the side. And then I also want to have, I'm going to use my stand mixer today. You can use a hand mixer, but it's very difficult and you might want a friend to make this recipe with you. I mean, that's the way they used to do it. Actually, they used to do it by hand. so. That actually I, it's fun, but you really might want a buddy to do that. But the hand, um, the stand mixer works great. I like to use that, and then I can just kind of do it real quick by myself. And I'm going to use two egg whites. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add them to my stand mixer bowl. So while I'm making the syrup, these are coming to room temperature. I'm also going to use my whisk attachment. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on, and now that's ready too. So now that I have all my prep work done, I'm going to head to the stove and I have a three quart saucepan. A two quart will also work. I'm adding the sugar and the water and the corn syrup all together and I want to make sure I get all that corn syrup out of the measuring cup. Have you ever had Divinity? I remember the first time I tried it. I mean, it's, it's a sugar bomb. It's a lot of sugar, but it's traditional and it's perfect for the holidays. I'm going to give this a quick stir and turn the heat on to low. I'm going to be stirring this continuously until the sugar dissolves and this will take a while. I would say at least 20 minutes, but candy kind of has a mind of its own, so it could be a little bit more, a little bit less. I'm going to be looking for when that sugar actually starts to dissolve. It's getting really close and I can tell because it's starting to bubble up around the sides of the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and add my candy thermometer and I don't want the thermometer to rest on the bottom of the pan so I like to take my spoon and just kind of run it underneath there to make sure I have space. Once that's done, I am removing my spoon because I am done stirring and I don't want to be tempted so I just like to remove it and put that away and now I get to watch the syrup cook. The coolest thing happens, the syrup turns a crystal clear and I'm absolutely fascinated by this. I don't know, but to me that is so cool. 
And I am now going to watch this to reach the temperature of 255. And that is not my final temperature, but that's when I know that I need to get on to my next step. Those egg whites that I left coming to room temperature, I'm going to now go and beat those until stiff peaks form. And I don't want to do this too early in the process because the egg whites will kind of flop. So that's why I specifically waited until 255 degrees to start beating the egg whites because I know that the syrup is really close to being ready. I am really watching the syrup temperature now. As soon as it gets to be about 259 degrees, I hurry back over, start up my egg whites again, get those beating, and as soon as the syrup reaches 260, that's the magic number. I turn the heat off, remove the candy thermometer, and bring that hot syrup over to the egg whites. With the mixer still going, I'm adding the hot syrup in a thin, continuous stream. And to do that, I have to raise the pan up pretty high. And that'll help kind of make that syrup flow really smooth. It's a bit awkward at first, and to tell you the truth, that pan starts to feel like it weighs a ton. But the good news is that after a few minutes, there's less syrup left in the pan, so it's not as bad, and it, it's slowly getting lighter and lighter. I can't imagine making this by hand, but that is what they did. My mother-in-law talks about when she was a little girl. Her mom and sister would make this every year for the holidays, and her mom would be pouring that hot syrup, and her sister would be furiously whipping those egg whites. I just, wow, I'm so impressed that they could do this, but my mother-in-law loves this candy, and that is one of her favorite memories. This is one thing that I really wanted to show in this video. When I make Divinity, um, these all the books don't say this at all, but this is what I figured out over the years. Just let that syrup flow as much as you can. When it's done, it's done. Do not scrape off the sides. That sides are all kind of coated in like the crusty sugar stuff. And I don't want any of that. It'll add a weird texture and crusty sugar stuff to the candy. So just as it flows and ends, that's it. I added in a teaspoon of vanilla and now I'm just letting the mixer do its thing. After a few minutes, the candy is starting to thicken up just a little bit. So I quickly stop it and add a little bit of food coloring and then I hurry up and start it again so that gets mixed in. Red and green is kind of traditional. You can use any color you like. A lot of times though, I'll just leave it white. The stand mixer bowl itself is actually really hot. But what I'm looking for, and I start to know that the candy's done, is that the mixture will become slightly dull and hold its shape. But the one key thing that I've learned is that it'll actually make kind of this flop sound. I recorded the flopping sound so you can hear it. And that's how I know it's done. Now it's just a matter of working really fast. I really have to hustle and I don't even care that the food coloring's not mixed in all the way. When I add those nuts, I'll just kind of you know, stir that food coloring in at the same time. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that. I need to get this candy onto the trays because it starts setting up right away. I'm using the buttered spoons and making little drops of divinity. And this honestly used to bother me because I like things that look perfect and these are kind of kitty wampus. But my mother-in-law said the sweetest thing. She said they always reminded her of snow drifts. And I thought, you know what, that's cool. These are fine. This makes about four dozen candies, kind of depending upon its size. And now all that I have left to do is I take the whole thing, the candy on the trays, and I just put them off to the side you know, and keep them at room temperature and let them harden probably for about 12 hours. And somewhere in that 12 hours, I, you know, once the candy's kind of firmed up a little bit, I'll just flip them so all the sides, you know, equally harden. And then that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to click to subscribe and hit that like button. The recipe's on the website, there's a link down below. It's ChristinaFull.com.